On this life flight, a mistake 50 metres underwater... Yeah, he was out of air. Then he just ditched his weight belt and left. ...could change a man's life forever. Don't do my legs. I walk again. A daring winch rescue... ..and a split seconds in attention... I heard Dave yell, help, 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 help! And he turned around and said, I've lost my thumb! ..calls for drastic measures... ..and put it in the jug of ice. <laughs> ..when emergency strike... ..time, distance... ..and the men and women of life flight... ..can be the difference between life and death. This is Life Flight. Reports have come in of a diver who's run out of air and time is of the essence. Initializing airborne, we have two hours 20 fuel, 13 minutes EPA with four POB. Pilot Harry Stevenson and crewman Logan Taylor finalise a landing site en route. So the so 41-year-old um, diver Nick is suffering a severe case of the bends. His life is at risk and time is running out. The team have saved precious minutes, giving intensive care paramedic Hanan Holiday the best chance to save the man's life. Fire officers and police have helped carry the stricken man off his boat, but his condition is serious. Hi guys, how are you doing? Diving mate Gordon was with Nick through the entire ordeal. We uh, went deep and um, Nick didn't watch his air as well as I did and he, he was out of air. We still had a little bit left at the bottom at the bottom, and then we got up to 30 metres and he, he was breathing off my octi as well. Then he just ditched his weight belt and left. I just came up after him but he was on top, on the side of the boat. Nick is an experienced diver but the speed of his ascent puts his life in immediate danger. At Life Flight Base, the fixed wing team are taking off on a mercy mission to help a man who is reported to have cut his thumb off. Hotel owner David Scott's severed thumb is being kept in a beer jug in the hope that it can be saved. Crewman Steve Reeve and flight nurse Helen Gardner know the stakes are high. So even with his thumb being reattached, um, there's no guarantee that it will actually take. It's a time critical uh, procedure. The team touch down in Palmerston North and make the quick trip to hospital where Dave is ready for the journey that will hopefully save his thumb. So what have somewhere. you done to that? Oh, that's glue. Oh, okay, okay. We'll put it on the other one that's glueless. Hotelier Dave was renovating a bedroom to enter the Best Country Hotel competition. Dave has previously won the coveted award and was attempting to trim a timber joist, but cut his thumb off instead. Oh, I did your help for a, a few, few minutes. Yep. Not normally, it ain't. I normally think I can wrap it up and uh, it's gold, but was a bit more cut off. <laughs> Daughter-in-law Alana was putting her child to bed when a commotion erupted downstairs. I heard Dave yell, help, 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 help! And I thought, well, it must be pretty serious because Dave doesn't normally ask for help. And I came out and I said, what's happened? And he turned around and said, I've lost my thumb. I got a flannel and like was like, OK, I've got to get a thumb. Ran in and I found it and then I I 
back on Paraparaumu Beach, experienced diver Nick is now conscious, but is suffering a severe case of the bends after running out of oxygen 50 metres below the surface. Open your eyes, Nick. Nick, I need a word from your mouth at least, so I can see your level of consciousness. Say yes or no? Okay. We may have to fly you straight to the decompression chamber in Christchurch, okay? You understand that? Good. How about your pain on your head? Out of 10, 10 the words you can imagine, zero, no pain. Give me a number. 10. 10, okay. Nitrogen bubbles are forming in Nick's bloodstream, putting him at risk of a stroke and spinal injury. But in his altered state, Nick is unaware his life is in immediate danger. Can I go diving again? Yeah, not today though. Deep down 54 metres, probably yeah. about 8 minutes in the water. Yeah, 8 minutes in the water. Probably, probably I'd say 8 minutes before we started coming up. Okay. And uh, we started coming up, we got to 30 metres, he ditched, so oh, he probably eight, okay. so about 8, 9, 10, 10 minutes, and then, then he shot, shot oh, okay. through, you know? Hi, Bruni. Hanan relays the information to specialists awaiting Nick's arrival. It was about roughly 10 minutes before he ran out of uh, air and about 30 meters he did not run up. Gordon and Nick have been diving together for over 20 years and have trained to deal with the situation, but something went very wrong. He just we're just deep and your, and your ear goes quicker when you're at a, at a depth. Just he just didn't watch his ear, obviously, run out. He was okay at the start and then just he just was he was breathing faster and faster and faster and couldn't take enough air and by the looks of it is what I was saying, and then just ditched his belt. Nick's brother suffered the bends 15 years ago while diving and spent three years learning to walk again. Nick could suffer an even worse fate. Do you feel my fingers? No? I can't feel my legs. He says he can't feel his legs. Experienced diver Nick has surfaced too quickly after running out of air 50 metres below the surface and is suffering a life-threatening case of the bends. Can you wiggle your toes on your feet? No? OK. Can you feel me touching here? And here? What about here? No, OK. I walk again. Huh? I walk again. We take care of you, OK? You just relax there, OK? Nitrogen bubbles could be compressing Nick's spinal cord, which leaves him at risk of being paralysed. Do you know he swallowed water? Oh, yeah, that's what I remember. Nick, Nick, open your eyes. Shall talk to the doctor in Christchurch? OK, we're going to fly you straight to there, OK? Oh. Are you mate? OK, oh. you want me lift? Yeah. Oh, I'll be right. I'm just thirsty. I feel like a bear. Nick swallowed a lot of seawater as he surfaced. The builder is extremely dehydrated, but he must remain nil by mouth for the journey. Yeah, we need to go. Yeah. See you, Nick. All good. Thanks, Yep, yep. Lifting off and uh, we'll be departing to the south, uh, low level. Hurry. Every metre above sea level puts Nick at greater risk of a deadly stroke. Very scary when um, you have this uh, sort of accident and you cannot feel your legs, you know. They will worry you when you walk again or not. So uh, uncertainty of what's going to happen. That's why they presented to Henry Park when he now. The life flight team have made the nine hour road journey in half an hour. Now Nick is being rushed into the hyperbaric chamber to combat the bends that is threatening his life. A two year old girl is suffering a life threatening asthma attack, but the motorway is blocked by a jackknife truck. The life flight team are the fastest option for getting her to desperately needed care. Pilot Grant Smith, crewman Julian Byrne, and intensive care paramedic David Huntley rush to aid the weakening child. Uh, 
David wastes no time getting inside the ambulance where intensive care paramedic Stephen Toto is caring for Jada, who has been administered nebulizer treatment and IM adrenaline in a local A&M clinic. So, real brittle asthmatic, um, she's been in ICU twice in the last few months. Jada is suffering her third life-threatening asthma attack in four months and Dad Ben is concerned her condition could deteriorate quickly. I see she's working quite yeah, hard. Yeah, she's working really hard. Rest rate was about 72. Um, she was saturated like 86, 86 Sorry, sweetie. I oh, know. So is that traffic still really heavy um, going I'm, I'm south? I'm not going to clear it up for two hours. Go on, have a wee listen, sweetie. It's probably cold. It's probably really quick, isn't it? She's tacky as can be, too. Tacky at about 200 bits a minute. Asthma constricts the airways, and Jada's heart is working overtime to compensate, but she's at risk of her system collapsing. Meanwhile, Dave and his severed thumb have arrived at the airport, ready for the most critical part of their journey. Hopefully they recognise it as my thumb. It's the man's thumb. We just need to get going. The jug used to hold beer, but now it contains Dave's left-hand thumb after renovations to the hotel he owns went wrong. This re um, jibbing a hallway in the uh, hotel. Before I knew it, I'd lost my thumb. I just looked down and, um, yeah, there was blood. There was not a lot of pain, but it felt as if my thumb was still there. Dave has been detached from his thumb for four hours. Helen is concerned surgery may not be effective if action is not taken soon. The loss of a thumb is quite important. You don't think about all the everyday things that you do that you use your thumb for, so it's really important that we manage to get his thumb reattached. The team land in Wellington, but the journey's not over. Daughter-in-law Alana is not letting go of Dave's digit. This is his thumb sitting in this jug. Keeping it nice and safe. Alana has been at her father-in-law's side throughout the whole ordeal. While Dave bound the stump with a towel, Alana found the thumb and stuck it in a jug from behind the bar. I don't get grossed out very easily, so I was kind of like, oh, I'll just get this and take it. But I kind of can't really believe it. Like, his thumb is not on his head. Back in Porirua, two-year-old Jada is close to collapse as a life-threatening asthma attack constricts her airway. It's quite quiet on that uh, right-hand side. Yeah, she's quite dull, eh? Yeah. Dad Ben has taken over Jada's care after Mum stayed up all night trying to ease their critically ill child's distress. Just one, she had a bad pop. Um, she was wheezing. Well, I'm still getting worse at home. Well, She's working really hard. She's breathing really fast. We'll just get her sorted out and loaded onto the, into the helicopter. The stress of flight could worsen Jada's asthma, but speed is essential. Traffic on the motorway still hasn't cleared, making the trip by air Jada's only chance of getting the treatment she needs. The Westpac rescue chopper has made the trip in six minutes. But Jada's condition has not improved as David brings the emergency department up to speed. So this is Jada. Jada is 26 months old. A uh, Brit known brittle asthmatic has been in ICU several times in the last few months. The two-year-old's asthma attack shows no sign of easing. Paediatric registrar Megan Sandal is concerned. Jada is becoming starved of oxygen. <coughs> At the life flight base, a mayday call has been received from an injured walker on a steep track. Stand by for a winch uh, winch winching out. Pilot override winching. Pilot Harry and crewman Julian Byrne will be in charge of winching Hunan into the bush. You're good there, Dogger. All set here, Captain. Roger, lifting off. 
The life flight team are working against rapidly fading light to find an injured walker. Captain zero one, we're, uh, we're established by Nui. We'll be operating low level just outside of the uh, control zone here. I think if we run this track, yeah, we'll that's our best bet. Okay. Open the door now. There's no sign of the patient amongst the maze of mountain bike tracks, but an ambulance crew is searching on the ground. All right, so we're located on top of the ridge just down from the power pylon. Now your nose is pointing directly at me at the moment. We got you, thank you. Here on the lights are located. Can I be a winch in a bit? Yep. All right, that's are they exactly, Harry? They're kind of behind us. Okay, third winch. Third winch. Good. And he's at the fast mode now. And four, three, two, one, slowing up. Wait, it's coming off. Hook is clear, watching an empty hook. Hernan finds Robin being treated by paramedic Caroline Marshall. Okay. Walker Robin and her daughters Laura and Katrina's trek ended abruptly when she slipped. You're not scared of heights? I'll be there, Tucker. Uh, oh, we are ready to go. Very noisy and windy. We're going to go together, okay? Like dancing. Sending the hook down to Tucker right now. Tucker the hook and hand. Clear back one, back one. Wait, coming on now, you have the weight. Anyway. Let's pop those the tree. The rotor downdraft is pushing Robin and Hernand into the trees. Coming up now. And you're clear to make a descent if you like. 25 feet of cable run. Got to rip the spin off. Meanwhile, Dave's being rushed to Hutt Hospital in an attempt to save the hotel owner's severed thumb. It still feels like it's on my hand. Uh, yeah. Like it's as if I've hit it with a hammer and uh, uh, yeah, it's not as if it's gone anywhere. You can still feel it trying to move. I've cut myself before and things like that and uh, been able to sort of wrap it up and get on with it, but today is a bit different. He was kind of like heavily breathing and sighing. I think he was more annoyed at himself that he had done it. And yeah, I couldn't really imagine what kind of pain you'd go through. Well, uh, obviously, it must be important to try and get me fun back on as quick as possible. You've only got so long before you can't stitch something on. He's been assessed and going straight through to theatre straight away so that they can attempt to get his thumb reattached effectively and hopefully he'll regain full use of that digit. In Wellington Hospital Emergency Department, asthma attack victim Jada's attempts to absorb enough oxygen are exhausting her to the point of collapse. <coughs> the emergency team are running out of options and call on intensive care specialists. Ben needs to give them room to treat his ailing daughter. No, it's just scary. Don't wish that upon nobody's kids. Just gotta be there. Be by her side. Guess what she asked for her daddy and her mummy. Jada is exhausted from the effort to breathe. Intensive care doctor Paul Young is concerned she will collapse. The thing that we might need to do is put her on a breathing machine and um, on life support. This is the third time in four months Jada has ended up in intensive care. This is a life-threatening asthma attack. She has responded well to the treatment that she's received. You know, as it's transpired, we haven't needed to escalate things to sort of life support. But um, certainly if that had been required, then that could have been the difference between her living and dying. Meanwhile, the life flight team are attempting to winch injured walker Robin on board, but she's spinning too fast. And the front of the skips now. He's got a port to run the skips there and he's sort of spin out. He's going to stop it. Stop it. OK, continue with it. You're clear to move off? Uh, yeah, you're clear to move off. The life flight team have managed to get Robin out before nightfall saving her a painful stretcher journey over steep tracks, but the break in her leg is significant. 
Alrighty, just relax. I'll check this one. Daughters Laura and Katrina have rushed to be by Robin's side after watching the rescue from below. As a daughter, you sort of panic in the sense, is mum going to be all right? Or, and only the little harness thing, you're like, oh, are they going to get up there safely? Doctors inspect the x-rays and the news is bad. Robin will need surgery. I don't like going under anaesthetic. I'm a bit nervous about that. After suffering the bends on a diving trip off Kapiti Island, Are you in any pain? 41-year-old Nick was rushed by life flight to a hyperbaric chamber in Christchurch. Four and a half months later, Nick has returned to the coastline that almost claimed his life. I was worried about my daughter and my partner. Just worried about my future, really. It's your whole life sort of runs through your mind. Eight days of hyperbaric chamber sessions stabilised the bends, but Nick was left paralysed and spent the next three months learning to walk again. It's pretty hard, you have your ups and downs, but you've just got to move on and just think, I'm going to beat this. I'd really like to think Life Light, because without them I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, and thanks very much, guys. You're awesome. Asthma sufferer Jada spent four days in ICU. She returned home and is now being treated with stronger medication. Robin had surgery to insert a plate in her ankle and it took eight weeks before she was able to walk. Robin is working up her leg strength so she can hit the trails again. Hotel owner Dave's thumb was reattached in a nine-hour operation. He's facing seven months rehabilitation before he gets full use of his thumb but Dave is back behind the bar pulling pints and a jug sits pride of place for donations to Life Flight.